Hi, and welcome to Great Western Building Systems. I'm Eric Beavers. Uh, we're getting back to making the step-by-step -step building erection videos, and, and we're gonna be releasing the sheeting video here uh, in the next week or so. Uh, but it occurred to me that some of the nomenclature we use to describe construction methods uh, and, and the building parts can be pretty specific. Uh, I've spent a lot of time on the phone with first-time builders and, and even seasoned erectors discussing stuff and wound up either being confused by or, or confusing our customer because we were miscommunicating about the drawings, the parts or whatever. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to wrap up everything in this video, but I'm gonna go over some of the basics. The building itself, wall IDs, uh, pitches, primary framing, the, the big heavy I-beams, uh, the secondary framing or, or the steel that joins the primary framing together, uh, the trims and panels and whatever else comes up as I go through all of this. But um, let's talk about the building overall. Everyone knows what a wall and a roof is, but when we're discussing over the phone or through email, we, we need to make sure we're all talking about the same wall or roof slope or opening, whatever. Uh, when you get your building plans from Great Western, the cover page uh, will be an isometric wireframe drawing of the building or, or a 3D. Here, uh, we outline the names for each wall. We don't use cardinal directions like you may sometimes see on architectural drawings. Uh, down in the bottom right of the cover page, we also note the page number that each wall or frame line can be found in the drawings package itself. I'm gonna start with the end walls and side walls. The end wall of a metal building can sometimes be referred to as uh, the gable or the rake end, but, but not all buildings are gables. Uh, some are gambrel, which is basically what I consider an, an old school barn. Uh, we also uh, do what we refer to as a Western style, uh, which is sometimes referred to as a raised center aisle or a clear story. Uh, so for a metal building, we define the end walls as the walls on the ends of the building. Uh, this is generally the width or the span of the building. Basically the distance the building rafters are spanning. Whether it's a clear span or a multi-span, it doesn't matter. Uh, an easy way to remember this is that the end walls cannot get gutters, uh, like, like an eave. Uh, on a normal square or rectangle building, we have two end walls, a left and a right, and we orient these based on the 3D drawing itself. The left end wall is on the left of the 3D and the right end wall is on the right side. Uh, we have similar nomenclature for the side walls. Uh, side walls are easy if you remember that the side walls are the eave side or the side that gutters would be on if, if your building has them. Uh, like the end walls, we name them based on their orientation from the 3D front side wall and back side wall. The front is facing toward the bottom of the page or towards the viewer, and the back wall is facing the top of the page. Uh, when we're talking about features on an individual wall, usually framed openings or base spacing, we generally consider the wall from left to right. Uh, the window is six feet from the corner, or whatever. And also, we always speak about the wall as if uh, we're on the outside of the building looking at the wall, never from the inside. Eve height versus clear height. Th these words ha have caused some confusion before, even with me. A and generally speaking, when we're estimating a building or, or selling one, we define the height of the building at the interface of the roof and the wall panels. A and when we use the word eave or eave height, th that's exactly what we're defining. Uh, for some, the word eave is synonymous with soffits, overhangs, extensions. Uh, we would instead use the nomenclature eave extensions with soffits to describe something like an overhang. Uh, eave height for a building that has eave extensions would still be measured to the roof panel at the plane where the wall panel meets it. I, I've spoken with some customers who describe the interior clearance. 
uh, that they need, or, or, or what I would call a clear height. An example would be someone that describes their building as, I don't know, 14 foot tall, because that's the clearance they need to park something like their RV in. So if you need a specific clear height, be sure to let us know. Uh, the clear height on a building with a 14 foot eave will depend on, on numerous building characteristics. Uh, the, the width or the span of the building, the, the roof loads, base spacing, and, and a bunch of other things. Uh, and, and that's because the rafter uh, and the purlin system, uh, the eave height will always be greater than the clear height. The same is also true with the width of the building. Uh, we define the width of the building from the outside rather than the inside. So a 40 foot wide building will actually be narrower on the inside because of the framing and the girt system for the walls. Base spacing is something else that's important to talk about. On, on a steel building, we use base spacing to define the space between the structural columns on the walls and the roof. Like I mentioned in the, in the other anchor bolt video, uh, sidewall base spacing is usually the easiest way to understand and determine. Uh, we, we keep the span between the bays as efficient as possible based on the snow and the wind loads. A, a 60 foot long building will generally have, you know, like three 20 foot bays. But in some cases, say with very minimal loads, uh, two 30 foot bays is possible. But it'll probably add a little bit to the cost because we have to beef up the framing system to handle the longer spans. On a building with very heavy loads, we may actually need to go with four 15-foot bays to minimize the load on the rafters and the roof purlins. Of course, base spacing doesn't have to be uniform either. In order to accommodate wide doors, we may need some unusual base spacing. For the end walls, we, we usually want to stay in that 20 to 25-foot range. There, we do have a lot of flexibility that doesn't impact the cost as much as it does on the sidewalls. Uh, when discussing bay spacing, just like I was talking about with the walls themselves, we're discussing the bays as if we're on the outside of the building from the left to the right. Bay spacing starts from the left corner of the outside wall, and then we measure the space from the web or the center line of the columns, and then finish the last bay to the right outside corner. Okay, bu building span. Uh, clear span or multi-span. Uh, span is defined as the length of a member or the rafter section uh, between the columns. And generally speaking, the span of the building is usually the same as the width. We, we call this a clear span, uh, meaning that the roof is supported by the walls and there are no columns interfering with the interior space. Uh, here we have a 40 foot clear span building. And when defining building dimensions like this, it's a 40 by 60 by 14, the width always comes first. And it is the measurement of the end wall. Uh, next is the length of the sidewalls and then the eave height. Multi-span buildings are, are buildings usually you know, fairly wide uh, that need additional columns underneath the rafters to either help uh, reduce cost or, or because they're necessary just to support the roof. The next thing is roof pitch. The pitch on the roof is how we describe the angle or the steepness of the roof slopes. We use the same nomenclature here as uh, everybody else in the industry does. Uh, inches in rise over the distance, right? Uh, 112, 212, 312, et cetera. S simply put, a, a 412 or, or a four on 12 uh, roof pitch means the roof is going to rise four inches for every 12 inches uh, all the way to the peak of the building. On building with unsymmetrical eave heights or if the peak of the roof is offset from the center line of the building, you're gonna wind up with different roof slope numbers for each side of the roof. We can design pretty much any slope even beyond a 12 on 12, which is a 45 degree angle. But generally for cost savings, we stay between 112 and 412. All right, okay, this was a lot and I've only barely cracked the surface of this. I'm gonna end this video here and we're gonna to have to break this up into several videos. Soon I'll be going over the primary structural framing members and how we define their individual parts and then we'll get into some secondary framing and other stuff. Thanks for joining me. I, I know that for some of you, this is probably a bit remedial, but I, I, I really do hope everyone uh, finds it helpful in some way. Build great, and I'll see you on the next one.